Good morning. Hello out there. There is a very good reason why we are facing this way in this corner today. Um, it's because, well, it's simply because I don't want to climb a ladder to get that projector working, really. That's the main reason why we're here today. So, so forgive me uh, for not doing that. That's why we're facing this way. There's no, there's no deep theological reason why we're now not facing east, as it were. So, the Coming in, guys. Good to see you all. Hello, Joy. You've got a snake. Now, this is very apt to have a snake today, actually. Joy is obviously deeply theological, has been studying the scriptures, and knows that today we're talking about John the Baptist and the brood of vipers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hi, Bo. Good to see you. Right, we are um, we're in the middle of Advent, of course. They don't normally let me play with matches. Let's see if I can get this working. Mike said, Max, it's matches, it's not a lighter. It was almost like, can you be trusted? And we lit the uh, first candle in November, didn't we, actually? Can we remember what the first candle was? Yeah, you, yeah, you can remember, but you're not going to say, are you? I'm going to cheat. Peace, peace. We all knew it was peace, didn't we? And then we lit the second candle, which was, of course, it was prophets. You're not wrong, but it was also hope. And now, would you like to come and light the candle for me? Don't have to. Anyone? Would you like to come and light the candle for me? Come here, my friend. Do you, do you trust me? Oh, can you hold that? All right. Now we're going to light this candle here. There you go. You can blow that one out. Can you blow it out? Well done. Give him a round of applause. There you go. So our first candle, our third candle, rather, I should say, that is for joy. Uh, and John the Baptist. And I have a little prayer somewhere. So, God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptized them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptised into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is come into the world. Amen. Let's just take a moment. I don't know where you are in your week this week. I know some of you have had a busy week because I've been talking to you. Some of you may be wondering... Uh, where you are, what's going on in the world right now. Is Boris going to shut us down again for Christmas? That sort of thing. Am I going to see my relatives? Um, but hopefully this is a moment when we can come together as family and just sit before Jesus. So let's just take a moment to be quiet before we continue. Just, if it helps, close your eyes. Maybe just give what's burdening you over to Jesus right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you that uh, we can come as family to worship you this morning. You know what's on our hearts, what's on our minds, what brings us down and what lifts us up. May all that we do and say and think this morning be acceptable as worship. Amen. I'm going to ask Neville come, to come and do the first reading quite early on in our service. So he's going to read to us from Philippians. The first reading is from Philippians chapter 4, 
verses 4 to 7. I'll do it with that. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Neville. Rejoice in the Lord always. We're going to rejoice in a slightly different way this morning. You'll notice that there is no musician up here. So we're going to be using videos this morning and maybe a couple of songs that you um, maybe don't know as well as you ha know the other songs, but rejoice in the Lord always is my encouragement to you this morning. We're going to start off by singing a song called... What are we going to start off by singing? Friend of God. This is quite an upbeat one, so the adults are going to need to get with it on this one. Okay. Um, you can remain seated if you wish to remain seated, or you can stand. I'll leave that choice up to you. Uh, we do unfortunately have to continue to wear our masks at the moment. So let's worship our God. <laughs> Is it true that you are thinking 
You, you couldn't hear her. She was saying, come on then. <laughs> the children are going to... Um, oh, I need to turn me down a little bit. The children are going to go out to their groups. Um, now, you going to go out? Grace? Grace is there? Yeah, Grace is there. So why don't we have the uh, young people come out here and going to go out with Elaine. Should we reach out a hand as we pray for them? Father, would you bless the young people as they continue to worship in their groups? May they know the truth that you are their friend and their saviour. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys.
just um, as we were singing, just I think I may have mentioned this the other week, but I was just reminded about the time um, in the church where Matt Redmond led worship, decided not to use music in their worship for some time. We can get thrown, can't we, by, I don't know, seats being moved or or suddenly having a video rather than a, than a band. And yet, on this week, when we've had that read, rejoice in the Lord always, just encourage that God accepts our worship however we offer it to him. I don't know, maybe you're a gardener, and when you're in the garden, you, you know, you're making those beautiful flowers and vegetables. And you can use that as worship to God. When you're just looking at Sally, when you when you're with the mums on a Thursday, that is worship to God, isn't it? When Alec and Roger are you know, in the mud and the cold, putting out lights so that people can see the story of Jesus, that is worship to God, isn't it? But let's sing one more song together and just lift our voices in worship. And if you want to sing let's pray if you want to be quiet and just lift your own worship to god that's equally okay the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. How great is our God Oh, see how great How great is our God And age to age He stands And time is in His hands 
you, Lord, for that truth. Thank you that you rule over all, and yet you come looking for us. Amen. Just lovely to uh, see you worshiping them. I, I get a very, I'm a very privileged position up here. I get to see all of you worshiping, so it's just lovely. I've got a question for you. What do you think others think about when they hear the word Christianity? Anyone? Church buildings. Any other guesses? What do people think when they hear Christianity? Jesus? Think we're daft. <laughs> Lunatics. <laughs> Nutters. That sounds like my brothers. They think I'm a nutter. To be fair, they've got history to prove that. So, uh, but anyone else? What about what do others think when they hear the word Christianity? You're, you're one of them. One, you're one of them. Right, oh, you're one of them. Yeah. Rog? Dog collared, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what this, uh, there's a box pox I'm going to play you, see what they say. Church. Church is for one thing. Church. At church. Probably togetherness and church and just peace on a Sunday, probably. For me, it's school. Upbringing. Um, my school, I went to an all girls Catholic school. Um, I went to a Catholic primary school as well. I've got quite a Catholic uh, family and background, so yeah. Um. I think of religious people and churches because I used to go to a Catholic school. Jesus, God, pray. Uh, Christ, God, Jesus on the cross. I think of um, you know Christ, Jesus. Um, Son of God being reborn um, and receiving the Eucharist as a true renewal of faith. Uh, I don't believe in Christianity myself, but I really admire people who do, and I wish I could have that kind of faith in some way. It's just a, a different religion than I believe. You know, they, they want some comfort in their lives, and you know, God's probably the best thing for that. But it's just, and it's just a different shade of all kind of religions, isn't it? Suits people, I suppose. It's more of a guidebook, I'd say, for life. The love of God. That's something that gives hope to those who believe in it. And when I watched that, I think I was quite sad actually, because um, apart from the one guy who was obviously ready to preach a sermon, um, and it, yeah, there's, there's obviously a couple of people in there who probably were Christian, but. It was, as Mike hit the nail on the head to start with, they were focusing on the establishment, weren't they? The, the buildings, the, the dog collars. And, and maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anyone say about the impact that Christians have on the world. I don't know, it just made me... In the new year, we're going to be re refocusing, looking on, looking at... A little bit, not for too long, but looking a little bit back on when we put together our vision and just reminding ourselves as we are two years into COVID about looking up, looking in, and then looking out. And it just, my heart is that we just impact this community for Christ, isn't it? I mean, you know, we've got, a, we've got a couple of things going on, but there is so much more. There are so many more people that don't know that Jesus died on the cross from. You think everyone knows. They, they don't. I see them. I go to school with them. I say, I take funerals for them. I marry them. I say, I'm going to say the Lord, Lord's Prayer, and you're welcome to join in. No one joins in because they don't know it. And it's our job. We have been given Bedhampton to share that with them. I wasn't going to say any of that, but apparently I did. <laughs> We're going to have our first reading. I think, are you taking the reading, Flair, or am I doing the reading this morning? <laughs> you can totally do it. <laughs> Let me find it for you in my Bible, shall I? <laughs> you get to see, oh, I haven't got too many notes in this one, so 
Luke 3, Luke 3. Grab a Bible if you've got a Bible. It'd be good to bring a Bible, actually, just as a little hint. I know some of us carry it on our phone. That's equally okay. There you go. Luke 3. And we're reading from 7 to 18. Luke 3, 7 to 18. Taken from John the Baptist prepares the way. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with your repentance and do not begin to say yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John extorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Fleur, for that. It's always good to have a, a storytelling voice read the Bible to us, isn't it? So. Let's take a moment just to pause with, before I share with you what what I think God has placed on my heart regarding this passage. And I'm focusing in, in my chat about, about that first part, about, about that reading that Fleur just read. So Lord, as we come before you to break open these scriptures, may our hearts be open to your spirit. Would you use what I prepared for your glory? Would you guide us? Would you chat with us? you nudge us. Amen. Be expected to hear from God, not just me, in the next few minutes, guys. Charity begins at home. Is that something that you've heard? It was uh, one of the things that I was sort of drummed into me as a young man, a kid. Um, family is the most important thing, and charity begins at home. And it all sounds rather biblical, doesn't it? So... Uh, Wonder about yourself. Wonder how you feel about that. I imagine many of you will feel that actually it's not a bad axiom to live by that charity begins at home because it does sound rather biblical and we, and we can turn to 1 Timothy and we can turn to chapter 5 in 1 Timothy, Timothy and read in verse 8, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. You could take that out and say that, that charity begins at home is a good maxim to live by. But I'm going to tell you today that it isn't necessarily biblical. I'm going to say, actually, I find it quite selfish. It's a sort of selfish attitude we see prevail in our society and ends up with us hoarding vaccines while others in the world go without. And then we see others who need a home drown in the channel. But perhaps that's a discussion for another time. You see, the dangers, as I've said before, of cherry-picking verses is that we don't get to understand the whole arching message of these books that are our scriptures. The fact that God wants us to live a life that honours him, that recognises that he came looking for us. I think what you're going to find today as we move on fairly briefly in this passage is that to be a Christian in relation 
to our own family is relatively easy, actually. But if we really want to walk the walk and not just talk the talk, we've got to take that out there. So let's turn to John the Baptizer. John the Baptizer in the wilderness, baptizing people. There are rumors going around that he might be the Messiah or Elijah reincarnated. He's a bit of a celebrity. Any Jewish person is going to want to be baptized by him. Now, the Jewish people had this inane belief, that they had, or rather that they had an inane right to salvation. They believed that they were saved by the very virtue of the fact that they were descended from Abraham which constituted them as the chosen people. And uh, again, that's a discussion for another time, because certainly the Jewish nation are on God's heart. But they believed by default that God was for them and raised them up. And then as they approached John the baptizer, John turns on them. And I think the message translation, the translation called the message, really brings this to life. They almost need Joy's little snake now, don't I? So it says, brood of snakes. Why do you think you'll do it? What do you think you're doing slivering down here to the river? Do you think that a little water on your snake skins is going to deflect God's judgment? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as your father. Being a child of Abraham is neither here nor there. Children of Abraham are a dime a dozen. God can make children from stones if he wants. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. I think the message is clear to the Jewish people in that from John there. Being Jewish isn't enough for you. Your life needs to reflect the love of God to all God's people. Despite what society might say, charity does not begin at home. And it's at this point that I got, in my preparation, I got to the point where I like to reflect how we then, you know, how we deal with that information. What do we do with it in our lives? And I thought, oh, well, we could explore this idea with you guys. We could explore this idea that John was a reincarnated Elijah. It'd be interesting to explore that. And we could have, I thought, grabbed my Greek New Testament book and, and get the words that John uses in Greek and try to understand a bit better the nuances of what that means. And then I got that nudge. I got a nudge, if I'm honest, to be real with you to be honest with you and straight with you. And so my friends, please forgive me. Don't think you can pull rank by claiming to be Church of England. Being a churchgoer is neither here nor there. Churchgoers are a dime a dozen. God can get churchgoers from stones if he wants. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? When you and I stand in front of Jesus, he's not going to say, oh, Max, you were, you were rector of Bedhampton. Come on in, my friend, your seat's over there. He's not going to say, oh, you went to church twice a month for 30 years. Come on in, my friend, there's your seat. Now Jesus is going to say, did your life reflect, once you've accepted him, did your life reflect the fact he died for you? Did those words that you said turn into action? He's not going to compare you to me or me to you or you to or me to anyone else. He's going to say, with the gifts that I bestowed upon you, with the circumstances I placed you within, did someone see God's kingdom come? Did you enlarge God's kingdom on earth? Was someone fed because you were there? Who came to know God because of your example? Who was set free?
because you stood up. Did you accept me and then live it out? It's not an easy message to hear, is it? I can tell you it's not an easy message to deliver. I would much rather tell you the truth that God loves you beyond all measure, came to die for you, and sees you as his child. I would much rather tell you that absolute truth. And I do, as you know, on a regular basis. What's not easy for me to say to you is this equal truth that we read today. That your life needs to reflect that love. Now, of course, we muck up. We all muck up. Even I muck up. I know you find that shocking. But have we taken the world's view of what it means to be a good person? Or are we living a life that honours God? Are we walking the walk as well as talking the talk? Do we encourage? Or do we gossip? Are the words that leave our mouths peace-giving words? Or are they anger? Do people see the spirit within us? I long for the day when people walk in this room and look at me and see the spirit. I long for the day when they walk in this room and they can't help but take a seat because they are so overpowered by the spirit in you guys. No one gets a ticket just for turning up, do they? We have to accept Jesus and then that has to impact our lives. So rather than me carrying on, I'm going to put some music on to reflect to. I'm going to let you dwell upon John's words and what you've heard this morning and maybe what the Spirit's been nudging you about. And then afterwards, we're just going to have a simple time of confession, a simple time of repentance. For, certainly for me, and perhaps for you, to put a stake in the ground and say, I'm ready to move on. So take some time with the Spirit now.
St. Paul says, be imitators of God. Love as Christ loved. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. But let us in confidence confess our sins to God, who forgives us in Christ. Saying together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have fought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as I say so often, it's easy to say those words, it's easy for me to say the word that you are forgiven, if there's anything that you've handed over to God this morning. Of course, it cost a lot with Christ on the cross. And it now takes you to, as I said earlier on, put that stake in the ground and walk on from here knowing that you are cleansed and we begin again. I can't hear it, but this little one over here is snoring. <laughs> Wouldn't, I mean, she's she resting in her mum's arms. I mean, there's not a better picture, is there? We are resting in the forgiveness in the arms of Christ. We can walk on in that peace, so peaceful that we can snore. <laughs> right, guys, just a few bits of family news. Maybe someone could nip out and let the children know that um, we're ready to receive them back in. Tent vent today. If you could maybe hang around afterwards and help Rog and Jill and I put up a few things, that'd be helpful. It won't take long, but it's just a bit quicker to put up gazebos and things for each other. Um, so yeah, it was great fun last week with all the guides and the cubs and things put all their tents up last week, it was wonderful to see all that, and I should also say as well, the guides are running um, a guess how many stars thing is, I'm really describing it well aren't I <laughs> on the table over there, there is a jar full of stars you have to guess how many stars are in them and put a pound in there or something like that um, also to say uh, we're asking you to book in for Christmas services um, we're all a bit unsure what might happen right now, aren't we? So we're just asking you to book in, mainly so we can get in contact with you if, if things change at the last minute, um, but also just to have a vague idea of numbers as we move forward. And of course, uh, many of you know and have known Mike Case for many years and know he uh, died the, the other week. Uh, his funeral will be on the 21st of December if you wish to attend that. Um, I'm sure a big group of us will be there at St. Thomas's. And other than that, that's all I've got. Anyone else got any more news, Jill? Any more news? Have I missed anything? Go on, Sally. <laughs> Don't go to Whiteley two weeks before Christmas, right. The nativity of Jesus and why he had to die. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got um, our crib services coming up on Christmas Eve. We've got a four, four o'clock one, but we've also put a 5.30 in there as well, just in case we have, well, we will you know, try and li spread the, place gets, place gets ran, doesn't it? So we'll spread that across the two services. And there will be a book as well, much along the same lines that they will go home with from there. Hope. Yeah, hope, yeah, hope are, 
come in. They used to have a different name, but they are a long... long yeah. yeah. For those that you don't know, the um, owner of the entertainer is a Christian. Uh, and I don't think he opens on Sundays, does he? he? He won't open on a Sunday, so. Right, young people, what have we been doing? Come and show me what you've been doing. Come on. Come on, Elaine, I'll put, I'll put, you can take your mask off for this bit. <laughs> we really just uh, honed in on the uh, nativity story today. So we read um, a lovely, funny book that was all about the innkeeper who kept being woken up in the night by a knock on the door. And um, then we did... We haven't brought it in, but we got the black paper out and we a long roll of black paper and we've done our own chalking of the nativity story. And we used some stencils, didn't we, as well? And then we went on to the star plates, which has been quite nice. And Charlie did a really good sticker picture here because he came out a little bit later. And um, that's about... Oh, and Grace has done... And Lydia's done a plate. That, that turned that. out really well. And Grace decided to do some decoupage Ooh. angel. So, uh, Look at you, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> so, as you can appreciate with the different age groups, it's not easy to just do one craft. Give them a round of applause, guys. Well done. You did very well. Thank you very much. Well Good to see you. Look at it. Look, I'm going to show you Joy's star. That's awesome, isn't it? This is my star. Your star. Fantastic. We, if you ever happened, to... Rog. Yes, go along it, yeah. So, uh, the Christmas journey. I got so many emails saying, you are going to do that again this year, aren't you? So, <laughs> Roger had already said, we're not doing it. I've said, well, no, Roger, we are doing it. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, right, what have we got there? So, um, we're going to um, sing our last song together now. Um, which is is in Christ alone. No. Um, so we can really, if that is one that we know, we can get into. Um, just to say, if anything's come up today that you want to chat about, you know, I'm always happy to have a cup of tea. Um, or if you simply want some prayer in this place before you leave today, then grab hold of me, grab hold of someone else. Don't leave this place today if you're feeling the need for prayer. Without some prayer, we are. A, now, we are family that can share these things with one another in confidence, and we can pray. So if you're, if you're wanting prayer today, grab someone and get them to pray for you. Let's sing our last uh, song together. In Christ alone, my hope is found.
Let's, uh, let's look into each other's eyes and, and actually share this prayer with one another. Let's say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a fantastic week. See you soon.